Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Quarantined Kitchen. Um, I am going to be making a really yummy dinner that I absolutely love and it's roasted spaghetti squash lasagna, if you will. Okay, so first we're going to start off with a spaghetti squash. They're so delicious. They're not crazy expensive by any means. They're really easy to make. And so, um, but I want to show you how to make them. That way you're not intimidated by this giant, weird, round, ish yellow thing. Okay, so let me show you. Let's get started. So, get a cutting board, good wooden cutting board, and put your spaghetti squash on there. Now we're gonna cut the end off. Make sure you have a nice, sharp knife. I'm so sorry, I have terrible lighting right now with my window. But um, this is a really good, sharp knife, and I'm going to hold this very firmly and cut the end off. Ta-da! And now I'm going to do the other end. Ta-da! Okay. Now stand it up on the cut end where it's nice and sturdy. Nothing's moving around. And I'm going to cut through half of the butternut, I'm sorry, the spaghetti squash, just like this. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other side. Now, the reason why I recommend you cutting each half separately is because it's a really, some of the, sometimes they can be really, really hard, and we want to eliminate all the possibilities of you cutting your fingers off. So I hope you appreciate taking the extra step to keep your phalanges safe. Okay, so now we're going to cut the other side. And you're left with ah, all those seeds. Now, maybe some of you have a purpose for these seeds or something that you like to do with them. If so, please let me know. I throw them out. I have no use for them. But maybe you could tell me something cool and teach me something I don't know. I would love to learn, so let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to take a spoon like this, just your normal average spoon, and scrape out all the seeds as so. Okay, so now we've cut and cleaned our spaghetti squash, and so I just wanted to show you what our next step is before we throw it in the oven. I've turned my oven on to 400 degrees, and I have a glass baking dish. You can use a, a aluminum one too if you want, but I love a glass baking dish. It's easier to clean in my opinion. Okay, so I'm gonna drizzle a teeny bit of olive oil at the bottom, and just rub it in. I personally love getting my hands dirty, so if you don't like doing this, maybe ask someone in your house to do it. And then I'm gonna put my spaghetti squash in and I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the tops of those and then I'm going to sprinkle some sea salt and then here's a really fun part we're going to massage the spaghetti squash so we want to rub that oil in on the outside of the skin and also on the inside mostly we want it on the interior of it and we're going to turn it cut side down okay so we're going to rub all this turn it cut side down Okay, great. I'm going to rinse my hands and then I'm going to stick this in the oven for 45 minutes and we'll come back soon and check on them. Okay, so welcome back. That process actually took a lot longer than I thought it would because my um, oops, my um, spaghetti squashes were a little bit bigger. So this took me about an hour and a half to do and what I actually ended up doing was halfway through the process, I put a half a cup of just regular water into the pan so that my spaghetti squash would start to steam. So now I'm going to flip them over very carefully using tongs. They're nice and soft. Okay, so you see they're really soft. That's exactly what we want. And now I'm going to take my fork and you can come a little bit closer. You can see how easily this shreds. Isn't that cool? It shreds so easily. So I'm gonna pull all of this away from the sides of the squash, but I'm also going to strain it. We don't want our um, spaghetti squash to be all liquidy and mushy. I think that that is so not yummy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put everything into this um, strainer right here. This is just a fine mesh sieve. Sorry if you can see it right here. Um, if you have just a regular strainer, you could use that and put a piece of cheesecloth in it. But um, something like this would work really well. And this is just to get the excess water out of it because, we again, we want to have nice, crisp um, spaghetti squash, not mushy or watery or wet. So I'm going to let this sit for a few more minutes, and then we'll show you the next step in just a minute. Thank you. Okay, hi guys. So 
I have had my spaghetti squash straining over this mesh in this mesh strainer for I don't know I would say about a half an hour you don't have to take that long I just had a lot of time in between um, but I've already discarded my extra water so I just wanted to show you my next few steps so I'm gonna lower my camera here so you can see a little bit better what I have going on okay so I'm going to put my spaghetti squash that has been strained I already emptied out the liquid and I have it in my bowl here and then I'm going to add tomato sauce now yes I am using a jar of tomato sauce you may have some of your own tomato sauce already homemade go ahead and use that I have probably about a half a cup in here and I'm just gonna pour that in no I'm sorry a whole cup I have about a whole cup in here and I'm gonna pour that in right in there I love just to get like a you know simple basic not too many extra added ingredients um, tomato sauce I like this the organic ones that they offer at Trader Joe's they're really good I do make my own sauce it's not hard but right now I'm just working with what I got and this is what I got so into the bowl is my um, spaghetti squash that has been strained my tomato sauce and I'm also gonna add some fresh chopped cherry tomatoes because I have them and I think they'll be delicious so I'm adding that into my mixture I'm also gonna add a little pinch of salt and I'm gonna mix that up now I don't have any but you might um, Parmesan cheese in here if you were to add Parmesan cheese it would be so spectacularly delicious but I don't have that so I'm gonna be okay with what I do have and so let me show you I have mixed all that up and now that is our filling and I want to show you what we're gonna do next I already have prepared so when I scraped out the insides of my spaghetti squash after it cooked I saved the shell and I moved it into a smaller dish so now I have like these built-in spaghetti squash boats that we're gonna build our lasagna in now in the meantime I also had made some simple meatballs if you have meatballs um, maybe you have some frozen ones maybe you have some sausage cook it up dice it up and it will be so delicious in your spaghetti squash lasagna I'll be right back okay so I also have a ball of fresh mozzarella cheese if you don't have fresh go ahead and use just shredded mozzarella I just prefer the fresh because usually when you buy a bag of shredded cheese they um, coat it in different things to help it um, prevent from caking but I don't want to eat all those extra ingredients I don't need so I just prefer to get the fresh one and I love the way it tastes I mean I could literally just bite into this thing right now but I won't um, but anyway fresh mozzarella is so good and you just need a few slices that we're gonna put on the top of our casserole so if you can see this here I'm gonna spoon these in Okay, so you can see what I've done is I have layered the spaghetti squash back into the shell with the sauce and the tomatoes. I've laid two meatballs on top of each one plus the fresh mozzarella slices. I'm gonna put it back in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's heated through and the cheese is bubbly and delicious. We'll be right back. Okay, are you guys ready for dinner? I think so. I'm ready for dinner. You guys want to see what's in the oven? Let's see how it turned out. Ready? Ah, it looks like spaghetti squash, lasagna, pizza, everything deliciousness. Oh my goodness. See how that cheese is browned on the top there? It's hot and yummy. That was loud. Okay. So this makes a really delicious dinner. You can make this ahead of time. 
I'm actually not ready for dinner, so this is me making it ahead of time, but so that I can show you how to do it. I love this dinner. It's a lot of food. This is really heavy. It's a couple pounds, so you can definitely um, split this between four people or have it for four different servings, or if you're really hungry, I'm not shaming you, go ahead and eat one whole boat. But anyway, make this, impress your Italian in-laws if you have them or whatever, enjoy them. Um, I love this recipe, it's really healthy, really delicious, really fresh tasting. Of course you can make whatever modifications you want to this. If you're vegan, don't put on the cheese and meatballs. If you're grain free, you can do what I did and I didn't put any of um, breadcrumbs or anything like that in my meatballs and so. Anyway, I'm very excited to eat this later and we'll cook soon, bye.